Hi everyone, Justin Barksdale here. We've had a lot of conversations lately with our customers discussing the desire to start deploying Kubernetes at the edge. Their use cases vary from providing AI inferencing to replacing point of sale systems and really anything in between. One of the challenges they face is maintaining consistency across the entirety of their fleet. When you have 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 locations, how do you maintain that what you've deployed at location one is the same as what was deployed at location 500? Really, we look at immutability as the answer. And providing a tool set that we call Edge Forge, we allow customers to build a customized immutable operating system. They take the operating system of their choice, let's say Ubuntu or RHEL if they want to choose that option. They build uh, around our tooling, provide any customizations that they may need, any packages they may add, drivers, etc. And then from that point, they can click a button and out we provide images that will let them build a pallet edge Kubernetes cluster that can be consistently deployed across the entirety of their fleet. Now let's take a look at how we achieve this and really the workflow that it takes to get from nothing to a deployed cluster. If we take a look at this drawing that we have here, we uh, are looking at a potential for customers to provide some type of flashing at a facility, at a staging facility, at a partner facility. It could really be anywhere, but they, they flash this device based on the operating system that they are able to build and we're going to show how to build in just a moment. They ship that device to the location. Once it's at the location, a user, a technician, a ma store manager, someone with really no Kubernetes knowledge is able to just plug that device in, provide power and ping. The device automatically registers with our cloud. And then from there, they can provision a Kubernetes cluster based on cluster profiles, which is the core of our platform. And how do they get this immutable operating system? Well, it's really quite simple. So we provided a tool set that we call Edge Forge and a process that really lets them customize uh, the operating system of their choice and then output a bunch of artifacts such as uh, images for their Kubernetes distribution and images to in for their installation that they can use to build Kubernetes clusters. So let's take a look. We have really two artifacts that are output. We have the installer ISO image and a provider image. The provider image is based on the Kubernetes provider that you're choosing. We provide flexibility. So things like I want to use K3S or I want to use a Kubeadm based Kubernetes deployment. We have PXKE, which is pallet extensible Kubernetes for the edge. Any of those that you want to choose, uh, you can provide in a provider image and that way you can deploy your cluster in a consistent manner. So how do we do this? Well, if we go through this document, and I'll provide links down in the show notes, but if we go through the document, it's really straightforward. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clone uh, a GitHub repo that's public. This is called CanvoS, which is a tool or a build process that lets us leverage some open source tooling to build these artifacts. So I'm just gonna copy this here. I'm going to switch to my text editor. I have a clean folder. There's nothing in this folder. And I'm just going to uh, clone that artifact or that folder. Now, if I go into that folder, uh, you can see there's a list of files that are here. And we're gonna make some changes to some of them, but if we follow the build steps, really the next set of things that we need to do is we need to change to uh, the version uh, tag that we wanna be to. Now, our currently we're, we're uh, working with version 4.2.3, and I can uh, go back to, oops, I can go back to my text editor and just do uh, get tag, and we can see that version 4.2.3 is the latest, so we'll uh, check out that version. And you can see now we've switched to the 4.2.3 tag. Now, we need to create some files, and we have templates for these files inside my directory here. Uh, the first file I wanna create is this arg template, so I'm just gonna copy my arg file to a new file called .arg. And if we take a look inside of that new file that we just created, it has some default attributes here. And it's just really some things that uh, help us get started with building out our images. It's things like custom tags. I'm gonna call this, I'll leave it as demo. What's my image registry? If you don't have your own registry, you can use this ttl.sh as you're getting started. This is a short-lived registry. So uh, once you push the images there, they only live there for 24 hours. and You'd have to repush every day basically as you continue to use this. I happen to have a Docker repo, so I will just uh, change that to that. 
What's the OS distribution? As I mentioned, we kind of give you some choices in what you want to bring. I'm going to just choose Ubuntu. Uh, what's the OS version? In this case, we're going to choose Ubuntu 2204. We also support Ubuntu 2004. What's the Kubernetes distribution? As I mentioned, you can have K3S or RK2 or, or just a standard uh, KubeADM based cluster. Uh, we call P PXKE, but uh, here I'm just going to leave it as K3S. What is the output installer name that you want it to be called? Some other attributes if you're building behind a proxy or you need to provide proxy information so that the build server you're building this on is able to reach the internet. Uh, we don't, by default, enable kernel updates. You can choose to do this. This can cause the image to have some inconsistent behavior as you may not want to update kernel every time you do a build. So we just leave this as false. And then cluster config is, is largely for a future use case. So once I have that, I can save this file and then close it. The next file that we need to copy is this uh, user data template. So we'll just uh, copy um, a user data template and we'll copy that to user dash data. And again, the same kind of thing. We're going to make some, just take a look at this. We're going to make some modifications. There's a lot here that's not really needed. This is just giving you examples of things that you might want to do. For example, you might want to set static networking. You might want to set more the proxy information inside the actual build device that you're using. I'm actually going to remove all of this because it's really not needed. And at the end of the day, the portion that is needed is this section, say, right in here. We need to provide an endpoint. The default endpoint is our uh, public SaaS environment, and this happens to be at api.spectrocloud.com. We need to provide an edge host token, which we'll gather in just a moment. And we need to provide a project name if we haven't set a default project for the edge host token. Now to get the Edge host token, I just need to have a Palette subscription or a free version, or I need to be able to log into Palette somehow. So I'm going to switch back over to my browser and just take a look inside of Palette. I have created a new project called Demo, so this Demo project. And if I was to take a look, there's really nothing here in, in my profiles. There's no clusters. Uh, there's really nothing in this project. I'm going to switch to my tenant admin. And then I'm going to go to tenant settings. And if I scroll down to the bottom, I have registration tokens. I don't have any registration tokens here. This is what we need to create. So I'm just going to say create a new token. We'll call this uh, demo. I can give it a description if I want. What's the default project? I'm going to select demo just to, okay, just to show you. And what's my expiration date? I'll just set it for seven days from now. Once I hit confirm, I'm, this token is generated for me. I can copy that to my clipboard. And then I go back into my. Uh, CLI and I very quickly just replace the value that's there. Leave that how it is. Now, I told you you could um, uh, set a project name here if you wanted to. Uh, if you hadn't set one as the default, so I'll just go ahead and change this to be um, demo like we already had. So I will change this to be demo, and we'll save that file. We can just close it out. The only other thing that you might want to add in here is there is the ability to do like I can type in install colon and then do uh, power off, oops, uh, power off as true. And this is something that is in our docs, calls out kind of the attributes that you can pass through here. And just to take a look, if we flip back to our docs, um, one of the elements uh, inside here is preparing this user data file. And if I look inside my install configuration, there's a lot of elements in here that we can add. But the one that we're doing at this very moment is this um, installation parameter. And if I just search for it, because it's probably faster, um, I can do, I can uh, add my, my uh, value here, right this. So install power off. If you notice, I actually have a typo in the one I just typed. So I'm just going to fix that very quickly. And what this basically does is it just tells the device to shut down uh, whenever you're done with the installation. All right. So I've created that file. The last thing that we might want to do is we may want to uh, customize our, our images. So we may want to add things like WireGuard. Now, since this is Ubuntu, I could do something along the nature of like, oh, just with any Docker container, apt install minus Y, and then say, um, uh, you know, let's say WireGuard, WireGuard, right? Uh, I might also do apt update and apt like this. So that way I'm doing my update and I'm grabbing WireGuard as um, part of my installation. All right. So we'll save that. And then the next thing is that we need to start the build. So it's really that simple. 
Uh, if we just take a look at what all we're going to build, um, we're going to build that provider image and then installation ISO, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and kick this off. Uh, we do this by just running a very simple script. It's actually called out in our docs. Again, if I go back and look, we've gone through this process of building these files and creating all these objects. The uh, last portion is this section right. Uh, let's see right in here where we do the build process. So, um, oh, I went too far down, that's the problem. So if I, right here. So we're gonna build all of our images. So I'll just copy that and uh, you don't have to uh, run it as sudo, but you can. So I'm just gonna run it as a sudo user and hit enter. This is gonna take about five or 10 minutes depending upon your environment. And so uh, while that's building, what, what is actually happening? Well, a couple of things. Let's take a look. Inside of our uh, build tool, we have <clears throat> a couple of things that are, we've done our customization of our arguments. We've uh, done our customization of our Docker file where we added WireGuard. We created a user data file. Now what happens next is that we create all of these objects. We are creating a provider image and one provider image for each version of Kubernetes that we support. We're also creating the Edge installation ISO, which allows you to actually flash the device. Inside of each of these is a set of layers. So we have the base operating system. We chose Ubuntu. Those Docker file customizations, that's where we installed WireGuard. The, um, any dependencies that we have dependencies from our platform, Palette, our agent, giving it the ability to talk out to our uh, SaaS platform or to our management platform and um, it gives it the ability to register. It gives it the ability to do a lot of the instructions that we provide it. We also uh, can provide preloaded content. So we'll talk about this in another episode, but the ability to preload your content, all of your images, everything that would go to build your cluster so that you don't have to download it. Think of uh, areas where you may have poor or limited bandwidth. And then those user data customizations that we added, we didn't do very many, we just provided a couple of flags, but there's a lot you could do as I showed you. You could uh, customize the networking, you can add custom scripting. There's a lot of things that you can do inside of there. We just very, very, very lightly scratched the surface. This all then builds a, uh, a, a, an ISO that can be attached to a USB drive and uh, we'll go through deploying that onto a device. Additionally, we also create these provider images that I mentioned. We, we keep them as the same as what is built in the ISO. So there really is no operating system difference. Fundamentally, it's the same base operating system, Ubuntu. It's those same Docker file customizations. And the only kind of uh, added, added benefit here is the K Kubernetes provider image. So that's that, did I choose uh, K3S or did I choose um, KubeADM? What did I choose? To, what type of Kubernetes did I want to deploy? And what version of that Kubernetes did I want to deploy? We create these provider images, they'll all be output, and then you have the ability to send them off to your uh, registry. And in my case, I chose a Docker registry, but you could, um, like I said, use that ttl.sh uh, going forward. All right, so just drilling in this to a little bit more, a little bit uh, more detail. If I take a look at how this happens, we start off with an upstream base operating system. So I chose Ubuntu. This is just pulling from Ubuntu's public uh, repo. It then we layer in um, the c components that really make the magic and making it immutable, which is Kairos. So Kairos is an open source project that we uh, sponsor. And Kairos is what takes that really vanilla operating system and turns it into something that can be immutable and layered on. From that point forward, we um, add in our, we take our Kairos base image, that's what's output from here, and we add in that palette agent I discussed and those customizations that we added from the Docker file. All of those are built in what's called an Edge Forge base image. From that point forward, um, the Edge Forge base image is used to build that installation ISO with uh, additional customizations as well as the uh, provider ISO, the Docker images that are, um, or container images that are uh, uploaded to your container registry. The I installation ISO once again is used to uh, attach to your device, you know, flash your device, whether that's through Pixie or whatever means it is that you need to deploy to these devices uh, for that initialization. That's the thing that gets it started. And then the second part of this is uh, that Docker image that gets uploaded to a registry, all right? 
So if I flip back and take a look at our code, we're still building. I'll go ahead and uh, stop the video here. Um, we are going to be uh, going through a series of these. This video is just really about um, building out the content. How do I build the ISO? Where do I get started? I'll put some links in the show notes, I think, in terms of what, uh, what things we, you know, how you might get started with this. Um, I would encourage you to check out our docs. It's pretty well uh, documented there, the steps that we just went through. Uh, additionally, you can check out our YouTube channel. There's other videos. And uh, we have uh, upcoming past webinars and our blogs that you can also check out, which talk more about our immutability. And as you see, this becoming more and more the um, de facto standard for deploying at the edge. Thank you for watching. Look forward to talking to you next time.